So, the Ruby nozzle. It's what the video is all about. Stick around. Let's get it installed on the Prusa i3 Mark III. I'm Ron and this is my place. So I got the Ruby. I've actually had it, uh, it was on sale uh, late last year. Uh, Matter Hackers, I think, is, had it on sale. It was like 75 bucks. Um, and I've been looking at them for a while and I just couldn't resist at this point. I went ahead and took the dive and got it. Um, I was originally gonna put it on the CR-10, but I really was enjoying the, the uh, Prusa Mark III so much that, uh, that I decided to go ahead and put it on that one. Uh, it's been doing the vast majority of my printing anyways. So, um, so anywho, that's what we're gonna do, is gonna put it on there. A uh, few things I wanted to talk about was, uh, unfortunately, I'm doing the video a little bit backwards. I don't have the nozzle to actually show you at the moment. Um, but it's actually a piece of ruby that's stuck inside of a nozzle. Um, it's all shaped and everything. So it's like a regular nozzle, but you just there's a few things you want to be careful about. Um, you can break it way easier than a, a regular nozzle. Um, but you're just going to go through your normal procedures of, of actually installing a nozzle. One thing they do recommend is this little device, which is nothing more than a torque wrench for installing a nozzle. And it really actually makes it re really simple. It's a seven millimeter socket, uh, quarter inch, and it just lets you thread it right in with, with the heat and everything. You just gotta be a little bit quicker so you don't accidentally melt everything. But then if you're, as you're tightening, instead of trying to figure it out, it, it basically just clicks like a torque wrench. And it's theoretically set for around half a newton meter. Um, I think one is what is max or something like that. Um, obviously, depending on what filament you're using, it's going to be slightly different. Um, but uh, but what's neat is it, it's torque wrench one way, but it locks in place the other for breaking a nozzle free and pulling it out. Um, it works really, really good. I already have it in there, um, so I know this. So anyways, that's the whole thing. So really all you're going to do is you, you have to heat up your nozzle to about 200 degrees to make sure you soften anything up that may have some res, uh, residue plastic floating around. And then you'll break the, the nozzle free. When you do that, you're going to want to make sure you're holding the heat break, the uh, heating block, I should say, with a pair of pliers. Uh, avoiding, and I'll be pointing it out, but you want to avoid the thermistor and the, and the uh, element and everything, the heater. You're just basically holding with some pliers and then you use this and you break it free and unscrew it, put in the new one, screw it in, snug it up till it goes pop, pop, pop. And the other thing after that is you got heat cycles dealing with the cold metals. So you're gonna wanna take it up beyond where you normally print. So if you're a PLA kinda maybe PETG type person, um, you wanna go above that 250, 255. Um, I, this one I went ahead and just took it to 260 and the whole concept is you want to heat it up beyond where you normally would be because if you just do it at 200 and now you start printing at 250 you're going to have different expansions of the metal and you could actually get leaks um, and get ended up with a loose hot end and a big globby mess. Um, so I took it up to 260 at the end. You would give it a final tweak, tweak, tweak just to make sure it's snug. And then you yeah, cool it down and then set, reset your first layer, which is what I'm getting ready to do. So here I'll, I'll walk you through what I did. So the actual replacement of the nozzle is easy. Um, right now I've got everything off and cold. And you can see my nozzle here is cold to the touch. I've done a cursory look to make sure everything looks relatively clean. Um, and the... the key is I'm of course going to be using the, we talked about it earlier, is the uh, the removal tool. And you don't want to do it while it's cold, you want to always heat it up. So I've raised my uh, hot end up so I can e have easy access to it. I all I took off was the nozzle cooler or the part cooler here just to give me easier access to this. You can actually go deeper but I think 
I'll have enough access to hold the block safely like that and then there so I should be good because you want to actually provide a little bit of support once you're ready to go you want to be very careful though of these two things because you got the heater here and you got the thermistor and you want to be very very careful and of course you don't want to damage um, your sensor over here either but so don't go gripping onto those you want to grip there's two flat sides front and back um, you can grip that just to kind of hold it in place so you're not twisting the, the heating block uh, up there on the throat so we're going to heat it up the idea is you're going to be melting some of your plastic away or heating it up so if there is some leftover stuff in there you're not over torquing anything and then we'll back it out i'll probably pause and let the this cool off again and then we'll put the ruby in okay so we're heated up i actually broke it free a little bit it was kind of tough but uh make sure you're not hitting any of that like your your fan that's spinning kind of grip it there and then you just spin her down and again keep in mind this is very hot you are dealing with something that's so okay so it's all out everything looks good um, keep in mind this is hot now um, because it was actually on the hot end so I'm gonna actually let this cool down a little bit just so I don't overheat the plastic which is already starting to get warm it's, it's a Raptor PLA from Maker Geeks, but it's still good. So we're going to pause the, the video a little bit right now. And I'm going to let this cool and then we'll put the ruby in. Okay, so everything's cool. I've got the ruby sitting in here. And I'm going to start threading it in. You want to be careful you don't accidentally cross thread anything so it's snugged up there I just kind of snag the heater block here to make sure it doesn't rotate until it clicks and we're done so now the only thing other thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to raise the temperature up to probably for mine this one I'm gonna go to I think two I'll probably go to 260 because I don't print up there so once you do that um, what, what you do dealing with here is a bunch of different metals and materials that are gonna shrink and you know shrink and expand with heat cycles so you want to make sure that once everything's snugged up, we want to heat up to the point that above where we typically print. Um, so then we can do a last snug just to make sure everything's going to be nice and, and snug and tight when we cool it down. Um, it's just kind of a final thing. So we're, we're up there right now. And again, I'm going to grab the nozzle and just do a couple clicks. And we'll call her good. I'm going to, just so I don't risk uh, burning myself, I'm going to cool it down and put the shroud on, and then we'll do a test print. So the Ruby's in, the Mark III's printing, and everything looks great. I checked the first layer, it had to change nothing, so the uh, dimensions of the nozzle are identical, uh, which is what I expected. Um, so it's printing just fine and everything seems to have gone well so we'll be printing this for a while and i'll probably give an update here in a while but unless i break something or something goes really bizarre i don't really expect any difference other than it's just not going to wear out so i'll start printing with some um some uh abrasive filament so anyway thanks for watching i uh, hope anybody that's looking at a ruby will get a little insight on how to install them uh, they seem to be good they're not going to make you print better. It's just simply going to allow you to print abrasives without destroying your nozzle. So if you don't print abrasives, it's not worth your money. Uh, if you do print abrasives, then it's good because you don't have to swap around between um, a hardened and, and 
all that. So, anywho, we'll see. I finally just took the plunge, and we'll see if I am happy with it or if it annoys me. So, thanks for watching. Uh, if you like what you see, please subscribe. Hit the like button. If you have something you don't like as much, please hit the dislike or the don't like. And if you do that, please let me know what it is that I can do to, to change or make things a little bit more enjoyable for you. Uh, again, I'm still playing with the sound. I'm still getting a feeling that I'm a little bit low, so I'm going to boost it up, and hopefully I don't blow anybody's eardrums out. Uh, thanks again, and print everything you can.